there were absolutely, well, maybe there was one or two spaces in New York City that really accepted work by artists of color and promoted works of artists of color. And a lot of the art that they showed was um, established black artists. And so I, I saw that there was a need for some place that really uh, promoted and looked for and exposed emerging artists of color. I think my first interaction with Rush uh, is a very long time ago. I was an undergrad at Pratt and I got a waitressing job uh, working at one of their fundraisers. Well, my first interaction with Rush actually came um, after a career change where I decided to delve into the art industry in a professional way after coming out of a financial career. And I saw the Gold Rush Awards online. I said, I really want to be in this place with these people. And fast forward, you know, eight or ten years, um, I met Tangi Murray through a very dear friend of mine and really fell in love with Rush and became part of the family almost instantaneously. I've known Rush probably for, oof, Lord of mercy, let me see how old is my youngest child, uh, 22 years. Um, I met Danny and he told me of his idea about doing Rush and he asked me if I wanted to be on the board at the time and I said yes. And I've been involved ever since. My studio was there, I would say around six months before they moved into the space. And we developed a relationship from that time on. And I know Rush Art Gallery since the day they moved in because I was the first person on the floor. And when they moved in, our mail got very confused since my last name is Rush and the name of the gallery was Rush Art Gallery. I came here when Derek Adams was still the curatorial director. Um, and it was my very first job, paid job, out of school. I kind of worked my way up, so I was associate curator and Derek entrusted me with curating some exhibitions um, under his guidance and mentorship. Um, and then when he left in 2009, I think it was, uh, took over as curatorial director. I found out about Rush Arts back in grad school uh, through Derek Adams and Hank Willis Thomas. My first show in New York actually was at Corridor Gallery, um, and the name of the show was Off Color. Over the course of my residency, I've had many studio visits uh, from a lot of the supporters of Rush Arts, and from that I've made a huge connection to a lot of the major galleries in the city and some museums beyond the city. I remember going around the Chelsea and getting turned away by a lot of different galleries, and then I came across Rush. And I remember walking in, and Derek came out, and I introduced myself and whatever, and he the said, they said, what's up? And I told him that I uh, was a video artist, and I wanted to see if they would, he would look at my work for consideration to show here. And I remember um, he took the V, one of the takes, one of the VHS takes from me, and he said he would look at it and give me a call. And he actually called me the next day and asked me to be in the show that he was putting together at the time. And I wound up being in the show here. And that was like my first show with a gallery. We've had an amazing run of 20 years of just producing, showing, and supporting and promoting artists of color. and. Part of the mission was not just artists of color, but women were underserved and underrepresented, and also art that was different from the mainstream. I did a series of performances. Um, uh, two included uh, where I, I had made these ceramic heads that I sewn into bustles and skirts, and uh, I'd given the smaller, these small heads to people who were in the audience, and they would play the percussion sound, and I would dance to them, and in the process of dancing, or moving um, to the sound created by the audience, the heads that I had on would shatter. It's also refreshing to have a place where, you know, there's only so many um, MFA programs, especially MFA programs that kind of feed into the mentality of wanting to be, you know, like a New York based artist. Because there's so many obstacles to being an artist in New York. It's like you have to, in some ways, find your own community in order for that to be sustainable. Um, and I think that you know artists have found themselves here and found each other through this space. There's not competition in the way that there is in kind of other scenes within the art world. I think that it's really about um, 
lifting each other up and about, you know, nurturing each other and, you know, sharing. Because I think that, like, a barter economy is totally necessary when there's not as many resources. We must have served over a thousand artists between the two galleries. And actually, the other gallery, Corridor Gallery, I lived here in this building and we're filming in Corridor. I lived here in this building and I bought the building with the gallery in mind because they had a long corridor. And I walked in and said, that's a gallery, those two walls. That's a gallery. So I said, Look. and then I took one of the tenants and said, listen, you don't really need that studio space and annex that. And now we have the, the hallway as a gallery or the corridor. And we have an inside space that's both office and, and, and uh, ex exhibition space. And then we went and got kids. We teach kids here. We teach kids in Chelsea and we teach kids in schools. So their art education program has been also uh, something that I have uh, thought very highly of. I've been in and out seeing the shows of these artists that would have not had an opportunity to be uh, doing art in, in a community and showing art in a gallery. It's been amazing what has uh, been produced out of that. In 2011, we founded the Rush Artists in Residence program. So for the past five years, we've had this new program where we are giving studio space to emerging artists for two months in the summertime. And then we follow that up with a pop-up solo exhibition in Chelsea. And it's a place where they can share this new body of work with the arts and with community. And it's a huge jumping off point for so many careers. I remember my very first summer here, uh, Anne Love Young was, I think, the first artist in residence. Um, so the program had just started. And she had a live radio show uh, that was broadcast from right here. Uh, and I remember just thinking that it was, A, amazing that you know a space like this in Chelsea could have um, something that was so kind of progressive and so responsive to audience kind of involved. So this year I am the artist in residence. Um, I had the awesome opportunity of having my, uh, my, my, my my studio here at Rush in Chelsea, which I think is an amazing experience for any artist to apply to, uh, to be in, the, in this space and to have so much creativity around, I think really helped me to produce a new body of work that I had no idea was going to come out this way. You've got the mentors, you know, you sort of have them in a corral. So the kids that you bring in, they can have access to that. And that's priceless. Earlier this year, I brought my daughter, um, who's very much into art, who's all of eight years old, to an exhibition in New York State of Mind that was curated by my co-chair, Larry Jose Mensa. And what was interesting after taking her to many openings and going to many openings myself, is how the community, the Rush community, coalesced around her immediately. And I think that's one thing that's really unique about Rush, although Rush is a corridor for many artists that um, people celebrate today that are you know, at the top of the art market. At the core of it all, everyone is very concerned about the next generation. Other than a starting point per se, I, I consider Rush and Corridor anchors and support systems. The past 20 years, we've shown about 2,000 artists and we've reached out to around 3,000 students a year, at least for the past 10 years. So the broad spectrum of what Rush is as far as a place for community, a place for artists, a place for arts education, a place for people to get to know more people, a breeding ground for new ideas, new art concepts. Um, lifelong friendships are formed here and it's just a beautiful place to be and to experience. So we had a bunch of different people running the gallery. We had Deborah Collingwood who was one of the founders. She helped me found it. I mean she found the space in Chelsea on 26th Street. Uh, I was thinking about the Lower East Side and she said no it's a lot of stuff happening in Chelsea. I was like, yeah, but who wants to walk 12 blocks to it? And then she said, no, I found a great space and it's cheap. And I went over there and said, okay, we're going to put it here. And so we put it there and it was the best thing we could have ever done. Uh, so Deborah Collinwood, and then there's Derek Adams, who really was the curator, gallery director, who set the tone for finding great, great young artists. And after Derek, I found Charlotte. And Charlotte is expanding what our programming is about different things. She created the Artists in Residence program. She's created a talk series. And we have Ocean Lane, who's our curator in residence, 
who's taking this and creating shows that are based in Rush but expand beyond the gal our gallery's walls into other galleries. And so we've had a lot of gallery friends and employees over the year. And of course, in Corridor Gallery, we had Senny Asphalt, who worked here for 10 years for free. And she showed up every Saturday and made sure the administration of this place ran for 10 years for free. So people who really believed in what we were doing and what we had going on here really made this. Nothing ever happens on its own. But largely, the way the reason this place is funded at the level it is, because Russell has worked tirelessly in making sure that we have the money necessary to serve these children and these artists. Um, you would think you hear the word rush and you would think that it's just like this big, untouchable thing, but it's really not. I mean, for me, Rush family is, it's the community of people that kind of find themselves here. So, you know, sitting at the desk in the front, the whole cast of characters that would walk in that door. Um, a lot of them are familiar faces, but also people that are really just kind of curious and interested in what the gallery has to offer. It's an openness. We are open to new ideas, thoughts, approaches, um, to whether it to be to practice, to contemporary thought, to social, political action. Um, there is a place for your voice here. Being here the last five years, I've really come to understand that it is a family. I love the people that I work with. I love the artists that I get to meet, I get to interact with. I'm constantly learning new things, learning new ideas, and really bringing art to the world, and that is something I love. And every new person that comes into the gallery, it's a place where everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome to talk and to get to know us. It's like a transient family <laughs> that comes in every year, but it's a family that sort of stays together so that, you know, you will see people from previous years. So I think it's something that's always sort of, you know, redefining and sort of reinventing itself. And I guess maybe that's the best kind of family to have. It keeps it interesting.